So Nigel Farage is back in the race and being back in the race he is going to certainly upset the political balance. I'm quite sure that he will be, um, failing some uh, horrible disaster, he will be elected to represent Clacton. How many more of the Reform Party will be with him in the next Parliament is another matter. I suspect several more than if he were not running. However, I'll uh, get back to that when I talk to you about the two Britons that we have here and the way the press are, well, leading the debate in the wrong direction. I'm Granny Opteryx. So this is what happened on, I suppose, uh, Mr Farage's first official candidate outing in Clacton, which is a seaside town that has seen better days. Okay, there are two things going on here. The first is, I'll find a close-up and I'll, I'll put it here. You'll see she's referred to as a woman here in the newspaper article, but she appears to be more like an overgrown teenager. But notice one thing. She stands there in a crowd which is full of people who want to be close to an, generally speaking, unprotected candidate. So she takes advantage of the workings of a liberal democracy. She comes armed, armed with a milkshake, but it could have been something else. It certainly isn't a good thing to do that to somebody. She comes with ill intent, stands among the crowd and then cowardly throws this uh, liquid at the candidate. I don't know what she expects, what she expects to happen there. I mean, does she expect Farage to say, oh, somebody's thrown a milkshake at me. Uh, goodness me, I think I'll have to stop running as a candidate. Uh, did she think that would happen? No. Uh, but what, look what else she does. She throws the liquid and then she's surrounded by people. She knows she's going to be apprehended, but she tries to run. I mean, if listen, if you have the courage of your convictions, you stay there. Just look at, look at this again. There she is. Throw, throw, and then she starts running away, which means she is a vandal, not a, a political saint of some sort. So that's the first thing. The second thing, she has the mentality of a three-year-old because that's the sort of thing a three-year-old does. You can help my channel by clicking like, by subscribing, by clicking the notification bell and by sharing if you're so inclined. Links to my other channels are in the description. Also links to donation sites. But really the best way you can help me is simply by clicking like. Thank you. Let's talk about that. We have, well, I've been talking about the way the press, uh, all of them, reported on the Tommy Robinson two-tier policing rally, which was held on June the 1st, last Saturday in London. The press, I, I looked at, if you look at my video, you will see that I took, I don't remember how many papers, maybe six or seven newspapers, but maybe, uh, maybe eight. I, I, it was quite a few and all of them had the same report. There were a couple of small variations, but basically it was the same thing, that the crowd comprised football hooligans and what were termed uh, anti-lockdown protesters, which I found absolutely astonishing you see because nobody liked the lockdown the people at the top end 
I've forgotten his name, but the government advisor who told the government that they had to lock down and cooked up a huge amount of figures to prove that the uh, that the uh, disease was going to spread exponentially and 90% and of the country would be dead in a week if, if we weren't locked down, something like that. He didn't like the lockdown either and got his girlfriend over from the other side of London so that they could spend a quiet uh, couple of afternoons of nookie in his flat. Uh, you know, well, who was going to stop him in that when everybody else was locked down? He didn't like the lockdown either, but he didn't come out and say no lockdown. He just went under the wire. He broke the rules and tried to do it on the quiet, as did the government. Uh, the, the whole cake gate thing for Boris Johnson's outfit at number 10. It wasn't just that, the Labour Party were doing the same thing. They were all at it, but they didn't raise a loud objection. The only people who got really uh, hit were the working people who were confined to small houses and who went out for walks in the park and got a uh, hit on by police who accused them of killing granny and they were the ones who thought the law would be on their side they were the ones who raised the straight out objections they were the ones who didn't have secret parties well mostly secret parties and girlfriends coming from here to there and they were the ones who got caught when they did You see what I'm getting at. And the newspapers refer to these people as lockdown protesters. For that, read the working classes and the lower middle classes and maybe some of the middle classes. The other people with the bigger gardens and the, and the sort of jobs that coasted along on, on uh, salaries. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they, they were okay. So when you say lockdown protester, you mean working people who were really stuck at home, couldn't earn a living. You mean working class. Anyway, we saw how the newspapers were reporting that. All of them had the same report. All of them concentrating on the criminal record of Tommy Robinson, a criminal record which in many instances is spurious, or, you know, like that uh, not the nine o'clock news sketch about that, that policeman, uh, Constable Savage, who was arresting the same man again and again for sins like, I don't know, wearing a loud shirt after the hours of darkness, or walking on the cracks in the pavement, as far as I remember, that sort of thing. That's very similar to what was happening to Tommy Robinson. Not quite so funny, though. Anyway, that's the sort of thing that the news has been pumping out, again, about Tommy Robinson, but also about Nigel Farage. And that overgrown three-year-old there developed her visceral hatred of Farage from those sorts of news outlets. And that's why she was able to throw something at him, because you, you can't do that unless you really hate somebody. And she'd obviously had it pushed into her mind that Nigel Farage is a terrible man. I, I, I do not understand what she thought throwing a milkshake at him would accomplish, but she had to, she had to literally eject her loathing of this terrible man. Now, you, you can get a story in a newspaper that's looked at from two different angles. For instance, let's assume that the Conservative Party say uh, they're going to abolish inheritance tax. All right. So you get a paper like The Telegraph saying the Conservative Party is abolishing the inheritance tax. This will save a lot of middle class households, a lot of uh, a lot of grief and worry and, uh, and and allow them to pass money on. Uh, there might be some 
I don't know what some, I, I'm not sure, I'm not an economist, but they might make economic, economics arguments about money being ploughed back into the system because it's, it's being used by the inheritors, all the rest of it. And then you get another paper like The Guardian saying this is a terrible idea, it means the rich get richer, it means that money accumulates down the generations, it means that the smaller people who don't get inheritances don't have as much of a chance. You can make all of those arguments and they are two completely opposing views. But neither is a lie. They are just two different ways of looking at the same problem of wealth transferring down the generations. And that's how newspapers should be. You can say, and the, the, the problem is people don't understand the difference between an opposing view and a lie. Very often I get under my videos when I've given a, a, an opinion about something and then they say, you're lying. It's, um, it's not like that, it's like this. And I'm not lying, I just have a different opinion. So you can see people do have this problem knowing the difference between lying and simply looking at things from a different angle. But p newspapers should do that and they don't do that anymore. What newspapers do now is lie. That's what they're doing. And they're all lying in unison. The Telegraph was lying just as much about the Tommy Robinson uh, parade, uh, sorry, rally. It, they were lying about that in the same words that, that lies were being relayed in the Daily Mirror the same lies. So they were obviously getting their lies from a central source and they weren't checking them out. And that's what's wrong with the press. And that's what's wrong with politics. When I rule the world, rhetoric will be one of the most important subjects in school, in the school curriculum. But that's vanishingly unlikely, isn't it? However, you might say uh, the first milkshake has been thrown in this election and the first time the election is actually starting to look interesting. I, I've said this before, I'll say it again, the best thing that could happen is that the Conservative Party squeak in by, you know, a minority government and they bring reform in with them and out, um, outnumber the Labour Party. And then reform will make the Conservatives actually stick to their promises because they can't stick to their promises themselves. I don't like reform because they want to change our voting system and as long and as tedious as it is with the British voting system to get a big party going, it is better than proportional representation. In my opinion, this is my way of looking out after it, but I have seen, for instance, anyone who studied the Israeli political system, which is one of the fairest in the world when it comes to proportional representation, and the government is crippled. <laughs> it's just horrible. It's the same government all the time with ministers sort of doing like a quadrille, changing. Nothing really changes in the top because it can't. This is now, in our case, we've had lots of people saying nothing's changing because the two parties, which are becoming known as the Uni Party, are coming closer together. I hope reform is going to throw a uh, spanner into that particular works and we're going to get some real politics from now on. Because with Nigel Farage, the Reform Party has definitely got a much better chance than it had two days ago. And I'm quite pleased about that. And I do wish them well. OK, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and T-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.